Hey, Dr. C here, and in this video, I want to show you what a sample report looks like for a voice scan. So if you're not familiar with these voice scans, please check out the video I'm going to link to in the description below first, and that'll give you kind of an introduction to what we're talking about. But one of these scans uh, assesses our energetic biofield, and it assesses over 420 health markers. So I'm going to complete the scan right now in real time to give you a sense of what that looks like once it's completed and the depth, the wealth of information that you can obtain, the insights um, you can obtain from one of these scans. So I'm going to hop right in. Um, as you can see right now, it's prompting me to click this microphone icon. And once that happens, it'll prompt me to count up to 10 so it can grab the frequencies from my voice input those into the software, compare it to um, what an optimal human biofield should be, and then I'll put the results and I'll go in and just see what that looks like. Okay, so bear with me for these 10 seconds while I, I'm counting to 10 and I uh, will get into the report right after. Oh, I need to allow access to my microphone first. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and I'll just click proceed. It's just ensuring that the audio is um, accurate. There's no uh, noise happening in the background. And so a couple, a few days ago, I did uh, kind of a test run just to see what this would look like when I recorded it, if those pop-ups are showing up. So we'll go to today's scan, which is uh, as of September 30th, today's date. You could see there's an option to access online results and then also the option to download a PDF document report as well. So we'll click on the online version. And so you can see the results are available to you essentially instantaneously. It takes those uh, 10 seconds to grab the frequencies uh, from your voice to assess your personal biofield. So what I'm going through this, just keep in mind that we're not diagnosing, we're not assessing for pathology or any end stage disease. What we're looking for are imbalances that are happening within that biofield, which means that either energy is not being produced optimally to power the different functions that are required in an optimal functioning body and or the information is not going to where it needs to go. There's some block happening in the information pathways or meridians. Uh, which is, you know, analogous to what is taught in traditional Chinese medicine. So we're not looking for pathology, we're looking for imbalances. Yet, I would argue that these are root causes, that these happen um, often before you're getting the symptoms showing up anyway. And the other thing to keep in mind too, is that if something is coming up as a priority, then it means that your body, one, is ready to heal that and two um, it is something that needs to be addressed first so it's being prioritized relative to these other markers okay so it doesn't necessarily mean other markers don't need attention but in this moment as of when you complete the scan it's telling us these are the areas that are being prioritized and they are ready to be healed they are ready to be addressed by the body okay so this first um, uh, page looks at what's called energy source. So at the top, you'll see these menu options, um, energy source, energy strength, energy flow, mind, body, etc. We'll click on each one of those so I could show you what's involved in each of those. Energy source is a little bit different than the others in that it's assessing for factors outside of us, external to us, that may be impacting our health. So that's why you're seeing things like diet, nutrition, hydration, movement, oxygenation, day, night, big fields. So big fields are the electromagnetic fields within the earth. Um, and there's 
uh, three of them, the equatorial axis, the vertical axis, and the magnetic polar axis. So big field is all about alignment. So are you being impacted by these fields on a physical level, like literally it, within your environment, or on a metaphysical level, level, are there aspects where you may be out of alignment in your life, okay? So as you could see, whenever I click on one of these markers, um, a subscreen opens up with a description about that marker. It tells us what it means, what is the function of that marker in our body, and then uh, it gives us insight into why that could be showing up. So the issue section provides a nice summary of exactly that. So big field alignment issues, were less of a problem in days gone by because we were spending more time outdoors, in nature, etc. But now we're spending a lot of time in front of our computers, our electronics, and so we're going to be more impacted by this electromagnetic radiation. So it also gives questions, so prompts for reflection. So you can uh, figure out for yourself, get in tune with your uh, intuition. Why is this coming up as a concern for me right now? So in what way am I not balanced or in alignment? Am I uh, sure of my place in the world? What's knocked me off center? So that's one of the things that I would help a client with is that we'll go through that together and really look at that in, in a nice deep way to like support them to figure this out. And then the go for it section provides action steps. And, you know, again, you're not going to be doing all of these. You want to pull out the ones that are going to be in highest service to you that are going to bring, bring about the most benefit. So, again, that's one of the things that I would work with a client with would be to figure that out. So what's that going to look like to address this particular imbalance in your body right now? And then the infoceuticals or remedies that you can consume orally um, that have been imprinted with the necessary information to correct this imbalance. So often we'll take um, a multifactorial approach. You know, we'll be looking at the lifestyle, the environment, adding in the infoceutical, um, just whatever we can to address this holistically. Polarity is um, very similar. So you could see polarity is really um, about the electromagnetic frequencies. So that can, you know, we can be exposed uh, through EMFs in a variety of ways. Polarity also is connected with genetic memory and consciousness. So sometimes it'll come up for that reason. Um, yeah, really when that one's coming up, it's, it's about grounding. There's the need for grounding in, you know, in different ways. Okay, so that's energy source. The next screen at the top is called energy strength. So think of these as different systems, organs of the body. And when they come up as a priority, it's telling us that they're having difficulty producing sufficient energy to power their optimal functioning. Okay, so that organ or system itself isn't optimally producing the necessary energy and or the information is not there for them to be able to do that, okay? So that's why you see things like the cells, nerves, um, heart, lung, stomach, etc. So they often will correlate with the organs in the body and each organ has its own biofield. So we have like the overall biofield uh, of the body and then each organ itself has its own biofield. So if we look at pancreas, which is showing up as a, a priority for me, you could see that that's coming up in the diagram. So it shows you where the biofield is. In this case, it's surrounding the pancreas itself. So the pancreas relates to that organ specifically, and then everything that the organ may be associated with in terms of its functioning. So that's why you also see, you know, impacting digestion, assisting with blood sugar regulation, the maturation of lymphocytes in the spleen, which are types of white blood cells. It's going to help to clear infection because of that. So it may stimulate the elimination of latent or chronic viral infections, all related to its impact on our immune health. So again, there's a description that comes up telling us about what 
the role of the pancreas is, how it's um, important to the body. And then the issue section will tell us both the physical aspects and then the metaphysical too. So like you want to consider digestion and sugar regulation, appetite and energy. So all, you know, those elements related to digestion, why that could be coming up. And then also in metaphysical terms. Okay, so, um, you know, the pancreas, for example, is associated with the muscles and with holding organs in place. So if there's a prolapse anywhere in the system, sometimes that's the reason that this one's coming up. Problems with fluid distribution like water retention, swollen stiff joints can also be linked to the pancreas because of its role in the body. Now, um, the pancreas driver, which is the infaceutical version that's um, indicated to correct this imbalance, carries the information of the vagus nerve, which is concerned with the parasympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic is all about rest and digest. It's where healing happens. It's that, um, you know, more calm aspect of our autonomic nervous system. So this is also connected with stress. Too much stress will switch off the signals to your digestive tract, you know, put it in overdrive or more in that sympathetic pathway. And that will be the trigger a lot of times for the pancreas um, going out of balance and the digestive system in general going out of balance. The pancreas is also affected by worrying and obsessive thinking. So that could be kind of the metaphysical connection for the pancreas as well. It has questions to prompt for reflection, similar to the other ones they were talking about. And then the go for it section has the action steps, the, the possibilities that you can engage in to help with correcting this imbalance. And then, of course, information about the pancreas and infaceutical, which is the, the remedy that you can take orally. And most infaceuticals will have an impact both on the physiological functioning to correct that, as well as the metaphysical connection. All right, so that's the energy strength section. Energy flow is a little different. So this is about how uh, information is being transported and sent throughout the body. Is it getting to where it needs to go? Are there any blockages or congestion in those meridians or energy information pathways? So if we click on one of these, such as the first one here, um, energetic integrator one, which is part of the neurosensory and large intestine meridian, Okay, you'll see the front uh, view here gives us all the organs that are connected with this energy or information pathway. And in this case, we'd want to look at any fours that are being prioritized as being more imp um, impacted. There's also a rear view. So some of the organs are going to be more accessible, more visible from the rear view. And then the meridian. So this is the actual energetic pathway or information pathway. And you could see um, it goes from kind of the tips of the sh shoulders all the way down to the tip of the index finger and then also on the back. So this would be kind of the, the back of the head, the occipital area, and then part of the shoulders and the neck. So sometimes this may be coming up as a priority if there's any tension, tightness that you may be holding um, in along that pathway. Maybe if there's a physical in, uh, injury along that pathway, uh, those are possibilities as well. And as before, we can scroll down and the submenu has opened up telling us what this pathway is related to. And so it's neurosensory. So there is the component of the nervous system. Um, there's the brain connection here. So the frontal lobes, the thalamus and the sensory cortex, and then the large intestine meridian, which uh, a big piece of that is mineral absorption. Um, and then kind of secondary uh, associations, ear, nose, and throat, bronchi, and skin, especially the dermis of the skin, and then the metaph metaphysical connection. So with these emotions, often it's going to be either a case of not allowing one to experience those emotions if they're of a higher frequency, such as joy, love, um, peace, etc., Whereas the ones that are of a lower frequency, often it's a case of holding on to them, suppressing them, uh, having difficulty letting them go. And for the large intestine meridian itself, a big um, association with that is letting go, 
Are you just holding on to something, having difficulty letting that go? Fulfillment, frustration, hope, despair, self-worth, guilt. Those are all possible themes connected to this meridian as an example. And again, you have a nice description of what those systems in the body, um, what their function is, and then the emotional connection to this as well. Right. So as an example, the large intestine re represents our ability to hold on and to let go. Okay. <clears throat> and then at the bottom, there's um, elements, certain chemicals um, that may be especially impactful on this meridian. So this one is especially damaged by butanols, which are from car fuels. And then if there's deficiencies in these minerals, it's going to be especially impacted as well. So things like iodine, cobalt, um, molybdenum, boron, sulfur. So like I said, a lot of information here. All right, the next section is mind-body. And this is a huge section. It's probably my favorite one, um, just because I love to get into the met metaphysical connection. This is also the section where we can assess the impact of trauma on the, the biofield. So there's three uh, submenus, look within, emotions, and brain performance. The first one, look within, has what are called holograms. And there's four that are related to brain development in the womb, so fetal, fetal development. And each of these areas then is associated with the development of other parts of our body. So these ones are often um, indicative if they're coming up as a priority of developmental trauma and its impact, uh, often on a subconscious level. We may not be aware of it, but that impact has gotten stuck in our tissues and it's, it's you know, creating imbalances in our biofield. So the brainstem hologram, as an example, if we scroll down here, you could see that it matches the following parts of the body. And there's numerous ones because um, that uh, over time in the fetal development developed into these parts of the body from endodermal tissue in, in general to acoustic nerves to the pharynx, lungs, parts of the um, intestine, large bowel, etc. Okay, so sometimes these are coming up if any of those um, organs are being affected. And then this also has just the overall kind of big theme of trauma related to conflict around survival, existence, and family. Okay, now with the holograms will often look for the fours. Remember I said four is kind of high priority, similar to the purples in the scan. So... Uh, one of my high priorities coming in the brainstem hologram is around nourishment. So if we click on that one, we can kind of see the general location on the body and it's associated with uh, the energetic field of the liver. So this one can relate to an emotional shock or conflict around food. So it could be very literal in terms of starving from lack of food and inability to digest food. Maybe as a baby, for example, you had difficulty um, consuming breast milk or formula and that experience, it's pre-verbal, right? So you may not be conscious of that, yet it could still have impacted you very significantly uh, on an energetic level. Or it could be um, less literal, maybe withholding from eating because there was a feeling that a situation couldn't be survived, a need to eat regularly for fear of not having food. Or it could be more about a conflict around being allowed to exist, having the nourishment, like the support, the love in that sense, nourishment in, in more than energetic sense in order to exist. And then with each of these, they're unique because they also offer an affirmation. So affirmations, we can use them as tools to help to correct um, these imbalances that are uh, the, the result of trauma. So that's an example. Um, there's three other holograms. Um, you know, I could do a whole uh, video just on one of these holograms, but we're going to go through just to give you a sense of, like I said, the wealth of information that you can obtain. Emotions. So the emotions are directly assessed too. Um, so we have the, what are called positive by the skin, and I view these more as the high vibration, high frequency emotions. Um, so things like love and joy and peace that you, you want to spend more of your time vibrating at the level of those emotions. 
Whereas the negative ones, um, negative, would be more the lower vibration, lower frequency emotions. Typically, it's more a case of holding on to these feelings, suppressing them, not letting them go. Whereas the positive ones, typically it's more that you have kind of a, a block, maybe a resistance, uh, allowing to allow oneself to feel those feelings, um, or that, you know, you're, you're not um, allowing the space to be able to create more of those feelings in your life. So that's all that's asked. Um, and just to give you an example, again, if you click on uh, the emotion, it gives you a nice description of what that's about and what um, the possible reasons are for that one coming up as a priority for you. And then the third subscreen in the mind body section is what's called brain performance. And this is kind of a combination of different sections, but they group them into um, assessing the different functions of the brain. So that's why we're seeing things like hearing and learning, vision and decision, sensing and controlling, thinking and feeling. Um, and then there's kind of more miscellaneous ones at the bottom here. If I give an example of audio, so audio relates to um, shock and trauma received through sound. All right, so it could be like sounds of gunfire, verbal abuse, car accidents, but some type of trauma or shock that was, you know, the medium through which it was delivered was through sound. Okay, so it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong uh, with your hearing, it's not about that, but it's more of the impact of the shock or the trauma. And, you know, similarly, video relates to shock or trauma experienced through seeing, so received visually, like witnessing a crime, observing the effects of war, these types of things. Okay. The next screen at the top here that we can click on is called energetic immunity. In this section is all about protection. So it's similar to how we think of our immune system from a conventional standpoint. Um, you know, what are the areas of the body that need to be involved in this protection so that if we're exposed to a pathogen or a toxin, the body can efficiently handle it. And if it's not in service to hanging around in our body, it can be eliminated efficiently as well. So um, to give you an example, we'll click on immune one at the top here. So you could see in the diagram, it's indicating the areas of the body that this one relates to. So the energetic terrain here encompasses the bone marrow, the blood, the tongue, heart, and front lobes of the brain. And so if this were coming up as a priority, this is telling us that those areas of the body may be currently impacted. And that's where we would, you know, bring in the context of the person themselves and what they're experiencing and or they may be especially susceptible to the impacts of an exposure, such as a pathogen or a toxin. And so this is where, yeah, you take into the context of the individual, as well as looking for general patterns and themes within the overall voice scan. So, you know, that's where I would come in to support someone to tease that out, to figure that out. Okay, the star section is kind of miscellaneous sections that um, are often located in other areas, but can be kind of their own system in and of themselves. So a good example is the lymphatic system. It's an organ unto itself, but it doesn't necessarily belong in any one system because it's interacting with so many other systems, okay? So again, it gives you a description of its impact on the body, what it could mean if this is coming up as a priority for you. The energy rejuvenation screen looks at uh, points in the body that specifically themselves could use support. And this is related to the My Health device that we would use. So I have my My Health device right here. And this is, um, it's a little different than a biofeedback device in that there's uh, scalar technology. PEMF technology, TENS technology, and then uh, what Energy for Life calls global scaling frequencies. So there's a few different technologies that are built into this device, and we can use it on person or in broadcast mode. 
broadcast mode, meaning that it doesn't necessarily have to be touching your skin in order for it to have an impact. So these points um, are coming up because you can access them and heal them using that particular device. Okay, and each of these will give you insight as well. So if I were to click on parathyroid, as an example, you could see its location. Um, obviously, it's around the thyroid and the throat. And the area of application would be exactly that area over the thyroid. It tells you how to use it for how long. So in this case, you could use it on, like directly on that part of the body or in broadcast mode. And you do it for about two minutes. So with frequencies, it doesn't necessarily take a long time. Uh, time in order to have an impact. So this one will help clear energy blocks with the parathyroid itself and its energetic field, as well as its connection with the small intestine meridian. And then there's also the body-mind association or the metaphysical association, where in this case, it's all around personal pro power. So problems of the thyroid are usually underactive or overactive, so hypo or hyper- uh, thyroidism, and then the potential metaphysical connection with hypo. It's often, you know, many years of putting others' needs before your own. Hyper, it's often the perceived need to rush through life and get things done in the quickest possible way, right? Sometimes it could be related to low self-esteem and low self-worth as well. So there's a lot there. And again, you need to look at this and ask yourself, well, what is applicable to me? Why is this showing up for me? And often, you know, I could support a client to connect with their intuition. And once we connect to that, you know, intuitive sense, they know. They already have um, the wisdom inside them. It's just a matter of connecting with that. The environment screen has a wealth of information in it as well. You could start to see why there's 420 markers in this report. Uh, I mean, just the environment screen alone has hundreds of markers. So there's different sub menus. The first one is home, work, and personal care. So this relates to possible exposures that can come in those environments or through those means. So that's why we see things like uh, BPA, flame retardants, fluoride, etc. So again, you can click on one of these um, and then there is the description that comes up and tells you where this possible exposure may be coming from, what the chemical is, what its potential effects may be. So with this section, often we'll not necessarily make too many conclusions um, from a one-off scan meaning that we want to look for patterns. So often we'll do scans every three to four weeks. And if we see that this is an ongoing priority, um, like for example, in my case, if I was seeing petrochemicals come up on multiple scans, that would indicate to me, hey, this is something I need to look into. So I would consider what possible exposures may be coming uh, to me currently in my environment. And I probably would want to take the next step in doing some testing, assess for this particular toxin to confirm if it is something that my body is holding on to. So then I could take action from there to eliminate and to detox this particular um, uh, toxin. So the scans um, are great for assessing your progress, for assessing current imbalances that are impacting our biofield, and to prompt um, further action if necessary in terms of further testing, right? It, more on a physiological level if that's something that we need to confirm is indeed present. Um, the other screens include different solvents, different toxic metals. So it has a number of, I would say, the more common heavy metals that are possible exposures. It's not an exhaustive list, but as uh, being included as part of the scan, I think it's really, really great. Um, agriculture, which looks at herbicides, fungicides, insecticides. Food chemicals like sulfites, for example different species of mold, so mycotoxins that we may be expo exposed through, through our contaminated food, water, and or, you know, damp kind of um, water damage buildings. And then the last screen is about radiation. So this one often connects with the um, 
big fields and polarity screens that we saw on the energy source screen. So if we saw those coming up as a priority, one of the things that we'd want to look at is on the environment screen under radiation. Are there any specific sources of radiation especially impacting me right now? Okay, so you could start to make connections and look for patterns and, you know, on a big picture, connect those dots. The nutrition screen, again, a whole bunch of markers under this one. So we have all the vitamins that are being assessed. Um, and these, again, you, you need to take into account the context of your particular um, health situation. So with a vitamin coming up, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have an overt deficiency. It could, but not necessarily. It could mean that maybe you're not getting enough of that food through your nutrition. And there's, you know, food recommended food sources that have the highest bioavailability of these nutrients that you could start to include. Um, but it could mean that maybe you're getting too much of this right? Maybe um, there's vitamin A, say, in a supplement that you're taking. It's more of a synthetic form of vitamin A, and it's not in service to your body. A priority could be coming up for that reason. So again, we, we look at the context of the individual, and we want to, you know, um, decipher these results within that context of, like, your specific context. So that's why my results don't mean anything to you. They're not going to be applicable, but it's more to see the kind of information, the types of health insights that you can receive from doing one of these voice scans. All the minerals are assessed as well. And then you have fat fields. So that's all the different types of fats, um, some more healthy than others, but they're all assessed. The proteins as well, so the amino acids that are the building blocks of the protein in our body. And then finally, antioxidants, which deal with oxidative stress, help to handle that in our body. The second submenu is around digestion and metabolism. So for metabolism, it looks at everything from basal metabolic rate to carbs and fats and proteins, how we're handling our macronutrients, to blood sugar regulation, uh, to pH balance. And then malabsorption. So these are the fields that are impacting our body's ability to absorb nutrients that are needed from our food. And you can see it's, it's not just the intestine. There's other um, parts of our body that are impacting that. So as an example, this is um, emotional stress release, right? So, or energetic stress uh, release, ESR. What that's telling us if that's coming up is that stress is actually impacting your gut's ability to absorb nutrients, right? So by b spending more time in the sympathetic nervous system, you're not supporting your digestion, uh, which requires to be in a parasympathetic state in order for those digestive functions to be happening. So there's much more than just, you know, the intestine that's going to be showing up here. And then blood oxygenation as well. So where are the nutrients that are especially important for oxygen? One, to be stored in the red blood cells, and then two, to be delivered where that needs to go throughout the body. And then the third subscreen is sensitivities, which is often, you know, of interest to a lot of people. Uh, some general, if there's uh, food sensitivities happening in general, and then the specific kinds. So gluten grains Raw is coming up for me, um, so this would be one that I would, you know, myself kind of consider, oh, have I consumed rye recently, or is this more just the susceptibility of showing up, like if I were to eat that, then that would trigger certain concerns. Um, other grains, so not gluten related, legumes like beans, lentils, chickpeas, etc. Um, tree nuts. So again, you can click on any of these, right? And it'll tell you why that could be coming up, what are the symptoms that might be showing up if you are having a sensitivity to this particular food, and then further testing that you can do to confirm that as well. So similar to the environmental screen, the nutrition screen would be one that I would want to see an ongoing pattern to as well. So like if this was just a one-off with cashews, that could mean that I may be susceptible for whatever reason in this moment that I'm doing the, the test, but that cashews wouldn't necessarily be a problem for me at another time, right? Or maybe I was just eating too many of them and it was just more of an excess issue. And then if I were to cut down the amount that I was eating, it wouldn't be a problem. So we look for ongoing patterns and then we also take into consideration the context. There's also citrus fruits. <clears throat> 
uh, nightshades, nightshade vegetables like tomatoes and peppers, and then in other category, which is some uh, miscellaneous ones like casein, histamines, etc. And then the final screen is called Life Journey, and this relates more to the metaphysical impacts on our health. So the first three submenus, Life Purpose, Be the Change, and the Hero's Journey, all relate to purpose, creating meaning and purpose in one's life. So you may be familiar with the Hero's Journey, uh, uh, as developed by Dr. Joseph Campbell. And what this one states is that we each have different stages along our life's journey that can relate to one, identifying what that purpose is and whether or not we heed that call, whether or not we heed our soul's calling um, and where we may get stuck along the way. And so in this case, you know, <laughs> and my cat Ollie saying hello on the video here. So if you're seeing a white blob, that's that's her. Um, under Inquirer, so this is the second stage called to adventure, Inquirer, which relates to understanding, roots, openness, skills, passion. Inquiry encourages us to look at the world and to look at ourselves. So in my case, I would ask myself, okay, um, you know, why is this coming up a, as a priority? What aspect of my life uh, am I being called to in relation to this stage? Okay. And then in the Be the Change section, it's more characteristics or traits that would be in service for me to uh, embody, to take on in order to support me through these stages that I'm currently going through. So, you know, for example, prudence is coming up as a secondary priority in my case. You could see prudence is kind of the, the harmony, uh, the point of harmony between pessimism and carelessness. So in my case, I would ask myself, where along that spectrum am I spending more time? Where am I leaning to or trending and how can I pull myself, anchor myself back to more of this harmonious state of prudence? So prudence in this case is observing the world around you and making wise decisions, how to invest your time, money, or talents. So am I kind of trending more towards a pessimistic view in regards to that? Or am I trending more towards a careless um, view of, of the world in, in through the lens of prudence? Okay, so that would be something that I would need to check in with myself and self-reflect. And then the life purpose screen has similar stages as the hero's journey. It's just a slightly different through the lens of what's called choice point. Um, there's a whole movie called Choice Point uh, that you can view and that movie walks you through these different stages. There's also built in some of the work by Dr. Carl Jung. So he developed what are called archetypes. And archetypes are, so let me see a common archetype here. Okay, let's just look at the ruler, it's coming up. So the ruler is either the king or the queen archetype. It's the executive who takes action and leads others through inspiration, etc. right? So this coming up as a priority for me, again, I would ask myself, okay, what aspect of my life are these qualities and characteristics needed? Where if I applied or embodied this archetype of the queen, would I benefit? would be in service to whatever I'm working on in my life or whatever stage I may be at in different aspects of my life. So we can see which of these archetypes maybe would be in service for us to embody in terms of the characteristics and, and the qualities of these archetypes. And then the other piece of Dr. Carl Jung's work is the unconscious patterns. So again, this looks at some major archetypes, king, queen, warrior, magician, lover, in a slightly different, um, through a slightly different lens. And this also gives some insight into maybe shadow work that needs to be done. You know, what may um, we not be conscious of that's still impacting us on that unconscious level. Beliefs are self-limiting beliefs. So usually if they're coming up as a priority, we're having difficulty believing this in the 
in our core, to our core, right? So uh, for me, I am supported by others. So is there a belief on some level that I'm not being supported or may I have um, some, you know, uh, difficulty trusting that, that that's the case, okay? And then a daily affirmation or that I could use perhaps to address that is simply I am supported by others. The emotion section we looked at previously, transformations is through the lens of the chakra system. So if these were coming up as a priority, you know, love with the crown chakra, maybe um, doing some work to address, you know, that particular chakra would be in service to you. Uh, and then the last one is creative cycle, which is through the lens of yin yang or traditional Chinese medicine. And these ones correlate to the energy strength screen. So what I mean by that, so for myself, I'll look at manage, which was coming up as a priority. So if you remember the pancreas, the pancreas driver, um, so an energy strength that was a priority, right? Energy driver 15, pancreas. And over here in the life journey, uh, creative cycle screen, it's telling me about the metaphysical association with the pancreas. So if I want to delve deeper into that body mind association, this is where I would come to see, okay, what out of this is applicable for me? And then how can I use this to take action to correct this imbalance? All right, and then the recommendation screen is related to the action steps, specifically the infaceuticals. So these are the ones that are being prioritized for me right now after the screen that I could order um, and take daily. Uh, so 15 drops of each, that's what that means over the period of 28 days. And that's typically when we would redo the scan and see you know, how these markers have shifted. And then the My Health function is the device like I said. So these would be the points that would be indicated or prioritized for me that I could apply on a daily basis as part of my personalized My Health protocol. And then a uh, personalized meditation track is also a possibility. So for people that um, especially are resonant with sound frequencies, um, auditory therapy, music therapy, we can unlock the meditation and that would be something that you would listen to on a daily basis as well. So you have the my health functions, which are the frequencies being delivered through the device, either in broadcast mode or directly on person. You have the infaceuticals, which is the imprinted remedies that you'd be taking orally. And then potentially, you know, the auditory or sound therapy that you would be doing through the meditation. And you can see everything is very gentle. Um, and then it's personalized. It's personalized for your results specifically. And, you know, if I was working with someone, we would come in here and we would say, okay, do these feel accurate to you? Are those resonating with you? Or maybe, you know, BFA, not so much. There's one that you're feeling a stronger resonance with that you want to pull in here and we would modify this protocol for you. So there is wiggle room in terms of modifying the protocol depending on your unique needs. All right, so hopefully... Um, that was helpful in giving you insight into the amount of information, um, the health insights, the uh, root causes that you can assess for within this voice scan and using the voice scan technology. If it's something that you're interested in accessing and trying out, the best way to do that is by hopping on one of our connection calls. So within those calls, um, first of all, they're free to attend. We create the the space, the um, container to be able to do this deeper work together as a group. Um, so on those calls, I would give you access to the voice scan technology and help you set up your account to complete that 10 second scan on the call. And then if you like, we can actually go in and I can help you one-on-one -on -one in terms of analyzing and deciphering the information within the context of your specific health. And then to help you kind of create some quick wins, what are the action steps that I can take personally to address the imbalances that are showing up? So it gives you a taste, one, uh, for the technology itself. And then two, you can, you know, kind of do a stress test, so to speak. Um, if there is any skepticism on your part, which is okay, totally okay, to say, okay, this resonates with me. 
Like this feels accurate to me, the stuff that's coming up, the results that are coming up, I can see that they are applicable. Now you don't know that until you actually complete the test. So if you're interested, I'd invite you to hop on one of our connection calls. I hope to see you there. Um, thanks for watching, taking the time to go through this with me today. I hope you found it of value. Sending you lots of love and I'll see you in the next video.